what you're talking about, about mate? The rumours, I was talking about... Raquel Welsh, actually. Uh, no, 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 come on. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it was one of them programmes here. Happy days. <laughs> what, in Barbados, you mean? I'll tell, tell you what, mate. He thought he, he thought he was top man, Ozzy, but he, he swallowed it with Rachel. He got, he got he had his moment and he blew it. He did blow it. Remember, if it had been you, if it had been you, God, mate. Oh, blimey. I know. I went up to the Savoy that evening with him after the game because we came in. I was living in Ascot at the time. He was at Windsor. And as you knew, we used to travel into Mitcham together and into the games together. And of course, when uh, Raquel was there that, that day, do you remember com- uh, coming in the dressing room half hour before kickoff? Do oh, I blimey? You, I mean, managers have <laughs> freeze today seeing that. She just walked in. Of course, Dickie Attenborough brought her in, didn't he? He says, says to Dave, he says, I've, I've got a special guest this afternoon, Dave. And he used, as you know, he used to bring all these film stars in, didn't he? You know, and, uh, and he said, I'd like to bring a special guest in. And there's Chopper Harris and his wife, Runtz, and people half hour before kickoff, he brings Raquel in. I mean, uh, for people of the present day, probably don't know who Raquel Welsh was, but she was, uh, she was a big film star, weren't she, back in the day? And uh, to bring her in the dressing room, well, Dave, I, Dave Sexton was I absolutely there. I think I was... was you there in the dressing room? That day, you were. I weren't there. Probably. I weren't there that day for some reason. Well, no, I was. You, uh, you'd have been there if you knew she'd have been coming, no odds, wouldn't you? No, not really. No, <laughs> I. Uh, I had it up on my plate. Don't worry about that. Um, <laughs> but was, can you remember? She come round the pub. Uh, Jane Seymour come round the pub with us. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, what was the name of the pub? The, it was. The, it was called uh, the Red Lion. Is now the Sporting Page. Right. Yeah. It's, well, we, we Jane come round right there. Well, she was delightful. She really was. I mean, uh, uh, Raquel was like Raquel on Del Boy, weren't she? You know. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> well, well, me and Oz, me and Oz, the, the, one of the uh, the guards after the game, he's in there and he's going round. Peter R's good here. Peter R's good here. I says Ozzy. I said that the geezer over there wants to have a word with you. And this big seven foot bodyguard of hers came over and he says, uh, 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 Osgood. So I says, Ozzy, the geezer wants you. He says, uh, Miss Welsh, I'd like you to come back to the Savoy this evening for a uh, drinks party. And I says, he went, bloody hell. So Ozzy says to me, this is after the game. And we were going out that night with the wives. I'd have been married six months. So Ozzy says, so we pop up there for an hour. I got back in <laughs> Sunday afternoon. <laughs> he, was, he, he was a bugger, Oz. You know, what, what a character. Oz, we miss him, don't we? I say, you know, we miss old Ozzy's character. Well, he thought Royal Windsor was named after him, didn't he? He thought they named it Royal <laughs> after him. <laughs> yeah. But can you was... remember the last the last time we we were together, me, you, and Stevie Kemba? Can you remember that? Oh bloody hell! I can't remember yesterday. We, we, went, we me, you, and Stevie ended up after a day at the bridge with uh, in the Lord Palmerston. Oh, the Lord Palmerston. The yeah. Yeah. Well, not when them gangsters were in, were they? You're not going to mention that, are you? Better not mention that. (laughs) (laughs) I went to the bar that night for for a change, getting a drink. And Giza says, bloody rubbish today, Bert. It says, yeah, it's all right. And it was uh, early season. And I thought, bloody hell, he's got a, it's a bit warm for a big overcoat like that. I says, he's a bit warm, mate, just to have a conversation. <laughs> so he says, there's special reasons for that, mate. Opened his coat and there's a bloody sawn off in there. <laughs> 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 it was a place, weren't it? Oh, dear. Well, characters around in them days. Well, these, these are I, great. I was off- over. <laughs> Are we messing around? We're just talking like I'm no, sorry. No, no, this is no. no 
We're just talking like mates. Right, talk. It's listen, not listen. like football. Can't be interested in that. I, I was in uh, I was in my mate's pub yesterday, uh, Tony Millard, who's a big Chelsea fan, and I told him that we were talking to you today. At, uh, we're having you on the show, and uh, everybody had their little input about yourself. And I, I said, your claim to fame off the football field was with Joe Cocker. <laughs> yeah. Would I be right? Yeah, when I started out. Now, he, that yeah. was that was yeah. before that was before he went to the America and hit it big time. But before that, I mean, I often wonder why you didn't duet with him throughout his career. Well, it, for this, unfortunately for the supporters of Chelsea fans that see me play, they wish I had have joined him in the group. Obviously, so but the thing was with <laughs> uh, with 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 <laughs> Joe, I met him. He was singing in a bar in uh, in the in funny the you club. Say in that. Funny you should say that because uh, oh, oh, funny, funny you say that because I tell you, who called me about three weeks ago. I was in I was over in Egypt and Stan Baldwin called me. Yeah, and uh, he said, "Oh, I remember you." How he said down at King's Road. He said, "But." He said, when I was playing for Liverpool A team, he said, I played He says, and after the game, Shankly called, Shankly called me in the office, in his office. I thought he was going to give me a new contract. And he said to me, he said, Stan, can I tell you the truth? He said, yes, Bill. He said, well, what is it? He says, you'll be better off being a comedian. He said, I've never looked back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's probably the same with me as well. Talking about Stevie Kember, I've got him coming up in a fortnight for the last game, and he says, "Birch, can you sort me uh, tickets out for the game?" I says, "Yeah, I'll sort you out. You know, you're the next player." I, it, so I says, uh, "Be great to see you, mate. Stop over. We're going to have a few gallons of happy water." And uh, he goes, "Yeah, but uh, can I bring me three sons? I've got five, four bloody tickets for him, Mudge. It's a liberty." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, got three but, sons. Well, we reckon he has, but I'm going to ask for uh, They're identification. <laughs> yeah. So now keep in touch with uh, uh, He was a good lad. Well, th but, th these are these are great. All, all these off the field stories are great, but I guess we're going to have to mention football at some point. Oh, uh, are we? Oh, well, yeah, yeah. I, I want to take oh, you back dear. to when when Chelsea first signed you from Sheffield United. I mean, what? How did you feel about, you know, leaving Bramall Lane for Stamford Bridge in, in the late 60s? Well, it was like, it was uh, at the time, me and Mick Jones were playing up front and the, the, the story and the true story, Don Revy came in for both of us, Mick Jones and myself. Uh, and uh, But the club, the boss says, uh, John Harris says, no, you can have one of them. Of course, Mick, I'm not deep crying myself but he was the top player Mick he was some centre forward Jonah so uh, they allowed Jonah to go Mick Jones to go to Leeds I was a bit upset about that you know because to go into Leeds in them days they were top they were top side Billy Brenner and Jackie Charlton etc etc Norman Hunter and it would have been brilliant so I got a bit of the Engelbert Umperdink about it, you know. So uh, <laughs> I did a, I did a little bit of a moody. I didn't not affected me game, but you know I was a bit silly at the time, young lad. Missed out on a massive to the biggest club at the time, or one of the biggest clubs. And then six weeks later, Johnny Harris uh, gets hold of me and says, "We've had a." an interest in you and this is funny we've had an interest in you i can't tell you it is and bramwell lane's three-sided with the old cricket yorkshire cricket used to be there so he says come with me so we walked across the football pitch the cricket pitch into the cricket pavilion i thought this is strange he says go and wait in there he says there's somebody wants to come and talk to you and then i heard him lock the door so he locked the door oh bloody hell what's going off here so he's like, uh, I picked the phone up, that had been cut off. So I'm sat there for 20 minutes. All of a sudden the door opens and there's there was Dave, uh, Johnny Harris, the manager says, uh, do you recognise this gentleman? And Dave had just been appointed manager after Tommy Dock. It was, you know, so he says, just go away with him. And uh, <laughs> I've got to tell you this, I know I'm going on a bit. Go away and discuss... Uh, 
with the, Mr. Sexton about your move to Chelsea. So, so we go to a, a restaurant in a hotel in Sheffield. So we're sat there and Dave's opposite me and he's going, so are you ready to come to the club? I says, yes, Mr. Sexton. He says, how much do you reckon you're worth to us? So at that time, 20, 30, 40,000 was a, a hell of a lot of money for a player. So he says, well, what do you think you're worth to us at Chelsea? I went, well, he says, well, come on. I said, Mick Jones had already just gone for about 50 to Leeds. I went, well, about 30. And Dave Sexton raised his hands. I went, 40. And Dave raised his hands again, 50. And I thought, he's got the wrong player here. I think he thinks I'm Mick Jones. <laughs> <laughs> he says, he says, I just, he sounds says. Like a, sounds, 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 like, <laughs> sounds like the price is right to me. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was. And it was. Like and the then price. he said, no, we're paying 100,000. Well, I know it's, a, it's half a week's wages to players today, Uds, but in them days, I think it was the, third or fifth third or fourth highest six figure fee at that time and uh, i went back and to, uh, i just said uh, bloody hell, i don't know what he expects from me a bit of pelly at that you know it was, uh, uh, was uh border but it was great to go down there three years i had with you guys and you you know I don't well people do blow smoke up your arrest but at the end of the day uh, some player or you were when you came in but you know, I always visioned you as not argumentative, but so single minded in everything you did. If you didn't want to do something, you wouldn't do it. If somebody told you to, you know, do that, your game came out. And when you came into that Chelsea side, I'm going to say, because I was fortunate enough to pay before I left a few games, uh, what an impact you made at that game. Probably. I'd put it alongside Aussie, and I can't say anything much better than that. For my period, anyway, from the time I was yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, that's enough. So, was that, going so you're your saying eyes. I was a better player than Kemba? Oh. You played, You said I was a I've better player Johnny, than Kemba. I've got Johnny next to me from our, <laughs> our press uh, corps at Leicester City. He's better than Kemba. I mean, Engelbert Umperdink's <laughs> better than Kemba. I've got him coming up this weekend, I tell you. Just, he's bringing off the family. Oh, blimey. Anyway. Well, I've got to, I've got to tell you a story that's it, it's so funny. I, I did a, a talk over in the, not far from Gatwick about six months ago. And the fella said, come over. He said, the last per person we had here in a talk was Stevie Kemba. He says, he got so many people. He said, so if he can fill it out, you will. Anyway, the story goes, and uh, he said, Steve, is coming tonight. And I went, lovely. I said, God's got a lovely story to tell about him. And uh, I told the story. I went out one day over Christmas. I went out. I was out for two days, Al. And I got, we played Palace on the Saturday, Stevie played for Palace, I played for Chelsea, and I didn't know what day of the week it was. I was still drunk. And uh, <laughs> Stevie looked a good player. You know, Stevie looked a well beater, really outstanding this day. And next thing you know, about 10 days later, Dave pulled me up at Mitchum and he said, listen, I'm buying a, buying a player from Crystal Palace. He says, uh, it won't affect your position, but I'm bringing him in anyway, Steve Kemba. So that my performance on that day put about fifty grand on Steve's head. I was that bad. <laughs> anyway, it turns out uh, Steve don't know this. So hi, uh, Steve. It's a true story. But um, he was a, he's a great lad, isn't he? He's a oh, great yeah. great addition yeah. to the squad. You know, he because uh, I remember. I was, in a youth team, he was Caleb, was like a year year below him, a year younger. And I thought, if that that is a standard of the England youth, I've got half a chance here, you know. So that's how the story goes. But we become great, like we like we did. You got your great mates at Chelsea, we had, didn't we? Yeah, the few yeah. of us. And then there was a couple, you know, not so, uh, not really in our school. But uh, I must say, uh, you little lot, 
that influenced me. You used to go into Palmerston after game on a Saturday night, stand yeah. in the corner and, uh, you know. When it, when it was shot, the... we used to go in, didn't we, across the road. When it was shot, everybody had left. And uh, we used to go in there, you know, just for the Ifield yeah. Tavern. That's it. It's just come to me. The Ifield Tavern. Yeah. We used to go yeah, in yeah. there and it was about, by the time we got there on the night game, it'd be about half 11 by the time the game finished, got changed. Yeah. We'd walk up there. He'd open up the landlord and uh, we were in there. Bill Tidy. Bill Tidy. Bill Tidy. Brilliant. I'll tell you what, Al. If they'd have had mobiles in them days, we wouldn't have lasted six months, would we? <laughs> Me, you and us. <laughs> and, and, and Charlie Cook. It'd have been like a Sweeney. Would have been oh, like a Sweeney. Episode oh, of a Sweeney, wouldn't it? I wish they could have... Uh, we could have had an old series, you know, <laughs> on TV and people <laughs> wouldn't have believed it. But no, Kevin's... Co- he, he, same as he, he came to Leicester and replaced me only for a few games till... The club found him out that he wasn't that good. So, <laughs> no, but he's still close, mate. And spoke to him last night because, as I say, he's coming up here for the yeah. for the last game with his three kids. So it'd be great to see him. And uh, it's great to see you, pal. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Johnny yeah. from our press team at Leicester City, uh, he's with me because he's had to set this up. And uh, so, obviously, he knows you and... Uh, he said, you know, I says, no, I don't know if you want to, you know, but we're both lucky. I mean, I've uh, I died for seven minutes a few years ago, a collapse with a, a cardiac arrest at the function and the nurses were there attending the do. So I was lucky I got away with it. And uh, you, we only both wanted, have, you only wanted to kiss alive. We both have. Only done we? It. <laughs> so we're both both lucky, pal, weren't we? Yes, yes, we both had, we just both had our first share. But listen, where do you keep your OBE or MBE award? Do you keep it at home or in, have you got it in the office there? Well, I've, actually, I wear it on me, uh, I wear it on a daily basis. But for you, I'm just going to turn around now. Listen, I didn't win many of them either. Look at that bugger. It's uh, in me, what's his name? Hold on, let me get, do you want to see That's it? That's an under 20. Do you want to see it? Do you reckon you'll get one? Hold on. Go on. You see that? Can you see it? Hold, hold it up a bit more, Birch. MBE. Right. I mean, I'm going to show you because obviously you'll never get one. You might get you might get knighted one day. So are you all right? I'll get CDM. Oh, nice, mate. Yeah, yeah. So, and you've well, got that for playing football or? No, pulling pull uh, Raquel Welsh. <laughs> yeah, Joe Cocker. Jo- no, no Joe Cocker. Cocker. Yeah, well, I, well, that was he was performing as I say in a club in in Sheffield, and he was a big United fan. And the Wednesday players used to go in this club as well. And he wouldn't sing until they had all gone. The Wednesday players, and he used to get up with him, uh, walking the dog. <laughs> it was he was a great lad, Joe. He's he's terrific. But uh, yeah, so great stories, mate. I don't I can't remember many games. I remember my debut at Sunderland, and uh, Nobby crossed the board. I remember going in. Uh, near post going in I'll, I'll tell you what Jim Baxter and Charlie Early were they two players they were playing that day for, for Sunderland two two great players well uh, Baxter but, was the one Baxter was uh, you know. yeah he was, was Jim know. Baxter you think Jim Baxter was better than Stevie Kemba listen Engelbert Umperdink's better than Stevie Kemba I mean <laughs> <laughs> oh, Pete, did he? Oh, did he watch this? Because he has thought. Yeah, sorry, no, sorry, have, you, sorry. have you had him on? Have you had him on? Or is he, are you going to no, get no. him on? Because he has slaughtered me if he if he comes on. Because <laughs> as you know, I was already very artistic and in grade one for getting around in. So when we used to go out together, I always made sure I was with you because you organised the the whip. And uh, at that at that juncture, I used to look for the men's toilet. So <laughs> I've never contributed to the whip. So I owe you a few bob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but no, it was good. It's a good job they didn't have mobiles, as I say, in them days, pal. We'd have been buried after about six months. Unbelievable. We? Unbelievable. Yeah, no. But you wouldn't change it, would you, Uds? Uh, mm -hmm. I'd have, I, I, you know the worst thing? I, you know what I really felt thought would have been a great move? Chelsea's best move ever. Instead of getting rid of Tommy Doherty, they should have kept Tommy and brought Dave in as coach. Yeah, yeah. I, and let 100%. Tommy do the managing and Dave do the coaching and keep out of our business, you know, our nights out and our social side. He worried more about that than he did about the football. You know? Yeah, no, you, with you, Tommy you, Doc, yeah. you know. No, how do you, you feel about that? No, you're spot on because Dave was a great coach. I come from Sheffield United where all the dead, the two wingers just crossed balls for me and Mick Jones and were heading balls for five days a week or every training yeah. session. That was about it. And then I always remember, Uds, first training session with Chelsea at that uh, on the Thames, that uh, university pitch anyway. And I remember, having played, he said to me, Dave Sexton, he says, uh, right, take a dozen balls out to the corner flag. This is my first training session at Chelsea. I thought, well, that's strange. I didn't argue with him. So I'm going to the corner flag. He says, I want you to bend the ball into the near post, he says. And uh, I thought, bend the ball in? I can't even... You know, I'd just come from Sheffield United. I was up an atom. I wasn't bloody Beckenbauer or anything. So I sat there. Well, I was there for 20 minutes bending these balls. And eventually I got a ball between this pole and the near post, which he put on the line. He says, <laughs> right, session over. I thought, what the hell am I doing? He's bought me as a centre forward and I'm taking corners. But that was his mentality, wasn't it? He wanted to broaden my... Brought my ability in a word, if uh, if you could, and he was fantastic. A well, great coach. Yeah, it's a waste of time. Out on the left anyway. <laughs> yeah. It was a waste of time, wasn't it? Yeah, but he was. No, nah, it's, it's sad. It's sad. He's he's not with us anymore. But he, you'd spot on odds. He was a great uh, coach. Probably lacked a bit in. Uh, man management. You know, I mean, uh, you and Aussie. You know, you you. You had him round your fingers, didn't you, really? Well, he had. A, he didn't like us, Al. He didn't like us personally, you know, um, and it was strange, you know. Uh, because you had your own... Back, you, you and Aussie, sorry for interrupting, but, well, I'm not sorry for it. You and Aussie, in my career, I've come across hundreds of players, were probably the two that stand out the most uh, single-minded in a positive way you were your own person where I would, you know, if you didn't want to do anything and Aussie didn't and thought there was something else better, I'm talking football wise, that was, for me, that's how I've always thought about you and Aussie. You couldn't, you were single minded. Is that the best thing I'm scratching for a sort of, you know, independent, you were your own person, like it's a but team game, but you were individuals. Wouldn't Talented wouldn't T C wouldn't T C be the same? Yeah, Tony Curry. exactly. You missed that. Yeah. yeah. Spoke with T C last week. We keep in touch. You're dead right. I don't know why, but you're spot on there. He was the same. Very few players of that era was like that. A lot. I don't mean this uh, in the wrong way. A bit like sheep. We followed. We followed the the norm sort of thing that what was expected on match days you was etc your own people you do you agree with me that's yeah. what my figure with you fantastic. yeah 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 yeah, yeah. You, but one you know, thing you one thing one... it was a waste of time you and ozzy going in a team meeting you'd have been better off going down the king's road early doors and getting them absolutely in. absolutely <laughs> absolutely but, but i want to know uh it's always kind of played on my mind. Why you kiss Tony Curry and you never kiss Rachel Welch? Well, uh, thanks for bringing that up, uh, Uds. I really appreciate <laughs> that. I've got, it's an on. iconic photograph. It's iconic, and it? it's a it's a it's a classic. 
Hold on. I'll tell you something. I'm in a, a, a next, I've got a bedroom I've converted into an office and I've got, Johnny, go and get that, please. Well, I've got, listen. <laughs> no, I've got it because I've got all stuff hanging up from, uh, I've got Palace here, I've got Chelsea thing, Johnny's. Can you... Yeah, classic, yeah. <laughs> That's a blinder, isn't it? Oh, hey, when it comes up, I'll tell you, just briefly, if you've got another three days, I'm rattling on, but... With playing seats, so my ex club, Chef U, I'm playing against TC, who, who came. And got, I went for 100 grand to Chelsea. TC came from Watford for 40 grand. Not much difference in ability, obviously. So we got we got friends. I'm running at the game. We're playing <laughs> Chef U at Bramall Lane. We trip over. I get up and I see TC and I went, give a kiss, just as a mate, kissed. But at that time, the guy behind the goal had got this. Next day, all hell broke loose because back in the 70s, you think footballers didn't kiss each other, especially on the lips. And I'm more, I'm more well known for this than I was my career. That's what's upset me. But me and TC, I went to Bramall well, Lane the other gay, year. And the gay community. Yeah. The gay community. All right, we don't have to go. We don't have to go there. I've proved that. I've got a couple of anyway. No, I had so. a, I had a, I got to add a hairdresser in Sloan Square, mate. In Eaton Terrace, used to have you and that on the wall. God, mate. <laughs> no, so it's taken pride of place. When TC comes down, he likes to have a look at it. So we got up and all hell broke loose. My missus didn't talk to me for a couple of weeks, which was a, a bonus, <laughs> really. So, uh, but it, that's it. I mean, my TC's career, yours career, fantastic. Mine is that's the only thing people remember if they do remember anything. But listen, do you know what it was? I'll tell you this, or do you know me? I never ever came off the pitch without having a bit of humour. I took it seriously, but there was always some time a little bit of a laugh or going. The ball goes out and have a chat with the people. I, there was never a game I played where I didn't play with a smile at some stage. For me, it was serious, but it was also enjoyable. Today, I don't think I've ever seen a player smile during a game. He'd probably be fine by the club if he I'm did. just saying that's a great that's that's a one that's a one big thing missing in today's game. Yeah. Even Arsenal, even Arsenal and Villa yesterday, you know, there was you know it was so intense. You know, you got a you you got to, you must have a sense of humour on the field if you don't. I mean, I remember playing. Uh, we played it Sheffield Wednesday one day. My first season in the in the team, and ball went down. And remember Tony Coleman, yeah, played on the yeah. left wing, yeah. played for Man City. Yeah, he was on the floor. I was on the floor like that. Where we never kissed each other. He's gone bang. He's give me a right hand, and I've gone. I've looked at him and I've laughed. You know, he expected me to hit him back. And I just laughed. I thought, well, it's funny, isn't it? You know, who does that on a football field? You know, and you've got to have a sense of humour on the field. If someone hits you, you, today, like, it's all handbags today, isn't it? Pulling shirts and all that kind of stuff, you know. Doesn't that, doesn't that annoy you, this rolling over a dozen times? I mean, if you get hit by Nobby Stiles and Norman Hunter and Tommy Smith, et cetera, et cetera, because everybody in our era or my era from the 60s right through had what you called the assassins, and they were, and you just get on with it. Because if you rolled over crying... They just laugh at you. So unless you'd broken something, you used to get on with it and uh, accept it. And that's the way it was. That's why it's difficult for me to see present day players today. I just get so frustrated, you know, they get breathed on and they're rolling over for, you know, six yeah. dozen times. It's just it's just crazy. Must annoy people of my generation. The new generation don't know any different. And when you no, tell no. them when you tell them what it was like. You know, if you got Chopper Harris up your Harris, you certainly knew about it. You know, I mean, with all due respect well, to Ronnie, he wasn't the greatest player that Chelsea's ever had, but he was the best destroyer Chelsea's ever had. Well, it's funny you say it because apart from Ronnie, uh, I remember Ozzy told me a story one day. He played in a testimonial at Craven Cottage and Dempsey marked him. Yeah. And Dem yeah. Dempsey. You know, I, I, when this was before Ozzy broke his leg, when he could glide past yeah. people easily, you know, and he glided past Demps, and Demps gave him a right hander right between, 
hit him where his wedding hit him where his wedding present was and Oz went down in a heap and uh he said to him Oz good he said if you do that one more time I'm gonna snap you and, Oz, <laughs> and then we bought them not long after I don't know whether Oz yeah. said the day by him because he's gonna do me but well, that was it, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah he bought but him them, Demps was a great, great player, mate. Demps, we've had him on. He's uh, he, he was a lovely fella. He was understated, wasn't he? Because yeah, for yeah, me, yeah. he didn't get the accolades that he should have done, Demps. I mean, Webby was at the side, a big, uh, big lad, you know, Webby, you know, took look control and that, you know. But uh, no, Demps was what I call, you know, not run of the mill. He was a real... He was solid, wasn't he? You knew with Demps what he was going to get. No messing around. And he played, you know, he was he, he was tremendous alongside Webby. Well, I think it, I think it was uh, justifiable when he scored that great goal in the Cup Winners' Cup replay, you know, the volley. And showed what a great player he was because he was capable of doing that. He was he was more than a destroyer. He was a great <laughs> centre-half. <laughs> he, he was... He was, he was yeah. He was a character as well, Odds, weren't he? I mean, he was he wasn't like me and you and Ozzy. He, he he had his own sort of he was a bit weird in a way, you know. Well he, he was, wasn't it? Well, he know. was very conscious he was very conscious of his hair, wasn't he? Yeah, well, lack of it, like we've all got now, mate, but there's uh, well. I don't mind now so much. <laughs> 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 it used to be prima donna, you know. I'd have worn a hairnet back in the seventies if I could have got away with it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was uh, it was a great. Well, game, what with you having a what? That what? But it's um, you know, you had Keith Weller used to wear his tights. Imagine <laughs> that today. Oh dear! Imagine yeah, something. He got slaughtered to wear them back in the day as well, for Christ's sake, as well, you know. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. but it was a. Uh, you wouldn't have swapped the era, would you, Rods? You wouldn't no, have swapped it. The, the only thing we'd lack in was the money out, wouldn't it? You know, oh. today's money. But, it's... you know, I don't know how, I always say to people, I don't know how we went out and enjoyed us ourselves so much on so little money. Yeah, well. You know, by, the time you, by the time you paid your mortgage and paid to get your missus of this and paid that, the rent, blah, 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 have your day out. You don't, you, we were out like four nights a week. Yeah, the thing was, when you consider the, like, the people like Georgie Best and Bobby Moore and Jeff Hurst of that era all had to uh, earn a living as soon as the final ball was kicked in different aspects of life, because, you know, as you've just said, the, the money was decent, but it wasn't anywhere near that you could say at the end of your career you could retire and go and buy a £3 million house and have another house on the continent somewhere, et cetera, et cetera. But in saying that, it's like me and you talking now, you couldn't have them memories. I don't believe the present crop would be sat here or doing something similar in 30, 40 odd years' time, having a laugh and a joke, what we got up to, and we took the game seriously. The friendships you meet uh, during the game hasn't changed for me. And obviously, yeah, it'd be nice to be on 120 grand a week or whatever it is, quarter of a million a week. But uh, this, this morning, the memories just come flooding back. And I tell you what, Yes, I would have changed my life for today's money. When I when I just ask when I do that, sorry, Tony. Who's, who's this geezer, Tony? It keeps interrupting you. I mean, he's really out of order. You know, he'll have to yeah. go. You know that one. Well, I've just. <laughs> I tell you, I tell you, I tell you when I tell you, I tell you when it all started Tony, for me. Tony. This is how it all started for me. I had a bad knee injury and I was out for a few months and. Dave Sexton came in and he, we played in a Mike Keane testimony at QPR and he, he, he watched me play and he signed me professional. And three days later, we were in Mozambique. Yeah. Was it? My yeah. Trip was in Mozambique. Yeah. I was and on that trip. At half time, yeah, yeah. But at half time, Sponge, Tommy had his head under the water tap. And try to come round, try and and he called it. He 
called him a zombie. He said, Tommy, you're playing like a zombie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we all fell like that in the dressing room. We've only played a Mozambique 11. Yeah. And, and, that, and that, kind of, that kind of stuck with Tom, you know. Yeah, but, but he um, was he was a great lad, weren't he? I mean, they all were back in the days. They had the as you say, it was it was a team. It was a team, you know, because if one went out, they all went out. You know, it's a little bit different yeah, yeah. today with mobiles and stuff like that. You can be, you know, spotted anywhere, sort of thing. But back in the day, it was good, you know. And uh, you know well why we called him Sponge, didn't you, Dave Sexton? He introduced me to him. He says. He went through the team. You, he says, this is Alan Hudson. I go, I'm pleased to meet you. And so it went through the team and he says, this is Tommy, that everybody calls it Tommy Sponge Baldwin. And so Dave Sexton says, that's because he soaks up a lot of punishment. He takes some uh, real tackles. So, so as he turns to me, he said, they called him Sponge because how much he drinks. He's like a bloody sponge. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was, I thought it was terrific. So, so Sponge was Sponge. Dave Sexton, till God bless him, till his time, they thought it was because he took a lot of punishment. I don't know if Dave really knew why we called him Sponge, but you know. Quality man, he, he, he'll be missed, sadly missed. But uh, yeah. So how long does this? Uh, are we boring anybody? This podcast. I mean, uh, you know, you've got one or two listeners, haven't you? There's a couple of people out there listening to this. They'll be, they'll be <laughs> loving, they'll be loving hearing the old story. Well, Don't worry, Bert. <laughs> uh, but um, I've got. Can I get a I word tell you, in well, I tell you one. I tell you one of the biggest mysteries. I don't know. One of the biggest (laughs) mysteries in my Chelsea, in my time in Chelsea, was the selling of Keith Weller. Why on earth did they sell him? Well, we benefited. He played superbly well. He was. He he played. I think he scored 10 goals in the first 10 games one season. And Dave said to him, you're not picking the left back up. He said, well, how can I score 10 goals in 10 games? Who worries about the left back? You know, that I think yeah. that was the no. first falling out. But then he told him at the end of that. So he won the cup, winner's cup with us. He was superb. And I can't believe it. And then the last, next time I see him, he went up to Leicester, I think, with all you boys. There's about five of the Chelsea boys in the team out. Yeah, it was Jimmy Bloomfield yeah, bought there? Jimmy Bloomfield bought John Samuels from Arsenal, me, uh, Wells, Keith Weller, uh, who was at the back? Uh, thingy, uh, what's his name from uh, from Arsenal? Oh God, I forget his name. It's just the top. Yeah, so Jimmy uh, did that. No, Chrissy Wells, Garland, Chrissy Garland, yeah, Chrissy went Garland. There. No, they all played. You know, really. Uh, you know, it, it was a good entertaining side for a while. Jeff, I Jeff think Tony Lockley, wants think to have a word. Works. We'll have to let Tony in, you know, because I'll have to start let me Tony on podcast. In. Let Tony let, in. Let, let Tony Keep in. On yeah. People are saying, God blimey, them two are going on a bit. Yeah, <laughs> Over think, to you, Tony. <laughs> well, I, I, I was just going to fill in your memory blank there, Birch. I think you were referring to Jeff Blockley. That's it. Bloody well done, son, Jeff Blockley. I apologise, Jeff, if you're still with us, but Jeff Blockley. So there was, you were right, Udi, about six players Jimmy Bloomfield bought from... Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Which you knew. We were did entertaining. You play, you play, but... did, you ever, did you play up front with Frank, Al? No, I Frank played Wervin, up front eh? and I'd got that fed up of being kicked for about seven, eight years. I said to Jimmy Bloomfield, look, I'm not doing the business. You brought me with us a forward. Can you give me an easy job and centre and midfield and I'll just stand there waving my arms for 90 minutes and uh, get away with it. So <laughs> I, he, he dropped me back. But no, then Elvis came in because, you know, the guy that passed away in Graceland's, that's Frank Worthington. We had Elvis Presley yeah. playing for us. Because he, <laughs> Frank was unreal. You you know, on the team oh, bus, yeah. team bus, you put your music on. Before he came, everybody had a tape they used to put in. The old tapes used to go in. And uh, we all had, you know, where you were travelling, Liverpool, Manchester, Chelsea, yeah. Arsenal. So we all had, you know, I had Neil Diamond in and stuff like that. Elvis came. Uh, Frank Elvis Worthington came 
everywhere we went, he used to sit up the front and Elvis was on. You couldn't get away. He played Elvis. If you if if you was playing in Scotland, we had Elvis for six hours travelling on a coach. You know, <laughs> he, he, he was he was a character. What do you friend. what do you what do you what do you actually think um had Frank come down to the bridge? Oh. And that they bought him and he played up front with Ozzy. Who would have been the king of Stamford Bridge oh, if them two played God. together? That, that's that's unreal. That uh, the pair of them. I mean, because he nearly he nearly signed for Shankly, but he failed yeah, the medical. Well, yeah, failed his medical because uh, then we got him. Uh, we, there's no need to go there. Well, I, <laughs> he did tell me, but anyway, Absolutely. that's for another day. But uh, yeah. I don't know. Ozzy and him have their own, again, their own characteristics. And it's like you, you know, like really, you stood out. I mean, we've both been involved with hundreds of different players over the years. I still am to this day, you know, what, 30, 40, 40 odd years at Leicester City. I've seen so many players come through, even Gary Lineker, his debut and stuff like that. So I've seen everybody there is to see. But I still hark back, not just because you're on here, but when you came into the side, you transformed it because you were such an individual. You had your own way of playing, but uh, you didn't I keep on about it. For me, you didn't listen to not orders, but suggestions, and you played the way that you wanted to play. And then Ozzy and Frankie were, though, was exactly the same. You know, I can pinpoint about three or four players, you included, not just because you're on this podcast, that I would think over my 20, uh, 15, 20 odd years, uh, and a dozen of them were at the highest level, played against the best, as you did, you know, Beckenbauer, Pele, you name them, we had the, the, you know, the lucky to have been in the same play against these players. And, uh, you know, uh, Bestie and Bobby Charlton, all of them. But for you, for me, I know I'm rambling on, but you stood out as individuals. So really, to answer your question, in their own way, they were different, but they weren't. They were both, as you know. What would you say then? Well, they, exactly. They were so completely different, but had the same attitude. They both thought they were the best. They both had their own special quality it, didn't they you, you know, know why you know why as well the england caps that you you because you who you who what you were if, i don't know if i've said that right you never got the caps that you deserve because of what i've said earlier you were individuals you played in a team and i'm not saying you wasn't a team player you was in frank but you weren't you played your game and your game with such ability, you got away with it. Add another player with less ability tried to do what you three have done, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have, it, you know, it wouldn't have happened. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? You know, so when well, uh, yeah, your, yeah, 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 your yeah. name's mentioned, I mean, Ozzy's uh, name mentioned, Frank Worthington's name mentioned. I played with some great players. I played against the best as well, but. It stands out that you were individuals within a team game and you played your own way. I can't say, can't praise you high than that, mate. And if you if you say uh, I was rubbish, then I'll have to accept that and I'll take back what I've just said. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll accept, I'll accept that out from you. That's right. That's I praise indeed. But um, but the thing with me, it was um, it was it was it was clear exactly what you've just said is true um, uh, my father taught me how to play the game he used to take me to see the best inside forwards and I was an inside forward which is none today Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, the first time he met Dave Sexton he said to Dave Sexton please don't tell my son how to play the game he already knows so that right. was a lot to do with it he wasn't trying to be blasé or nothing. He just said, just don't try and change him. He knows how to play the game. He, I took him to our, our sort of watch, George Easter, um, Spurs, John White, and Johnny Haynes at Fulham, you know, the great inside forwards. And I think that is where, since our country has never had inside forwards, I think we kind of 
never Lots been in, a bit. in yeah. contention. Inside forward, the last great inside forward was probably Paul Gascoigne, yeah? Yeah, the old school, yeah. Old old type of player from our generation. And Hoddle, 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 be, Hoddle made his debut. Hoddle, when, when made his debut against me at Stoke in 74, and Gascoigne come after him, and I think he was the last real great inside forward. Yeah. So we could we could really boast. Better than these lads at Manchester City as well. Well, you know, as a, as a group, they're probably, you know, one of the best sides. But as individuals, you could go, you could go around the old, as we say, the old first division, which is now the premiership, of course. And each side, as low as they were, still had individuals of... Uh, you know, top quality. It was, uh, uh, and you didn't take prisoners in them days. You know, it's the one thing that still not annoys me because I'm past all that, but just makes me smile to myself inwardly, you know, about uh, as I keep coming back, uh, you see somebody go down and the physios are running on and then they're having treatment for three or four minutes and uh, they get up, go to the touchline and then they're back on, you know. I mean, it never happened to that day. If you went down, <laughs> you, you, you didn't get up. You, that was it. You was uh, you was marched off. There was a reason. There was there was good reason they could stay down. Yeah, not like today. Yeah. I mean, I uh, you, you talk about them type of players. I I went to Arsenal when I went to Arsenal. Uh, um, my first roommate was Peter Stoll. Sorry. Now there was a, yeah. there was yeah. a in midfield. You had to be useful on your day to get away from Peter Story about getting a clout, you know. Great yeah. fella, lovely man. In fact, the night, the night, two nights, the night before my car accident when I got hit in a mile in road, <clears throat> I was at my mate Martin Knight, who's a great friend of mine. I was at his business birthday, uh, Christmas party. It was December the 14th. I got hit by the car on the 15th. Yeah, I remember. And yeah. I ordered a mini cab. I was all over the gap. I'd been out all day like we we did in them days. And who turned up as my mini cab driver but Peter Story? Bloody it was unbelievable, you, mate. And I, you, you know, you it, was, it. it was what. But it was so sad, you know, that there he was. And, and like, I mean, you've done fantastically well. I mean, just. To do what you've done it letter after the game and do what you've done is in, in in an environment that you love, you know, being around players and fans and all that. It, it's great that someone can stay in the game like you have, and it's great that you got the award. And you know, I'm so pleased for you. I couldn't be it more is, pleased because you know, uh, it's great to stay in the game like that. And you've earned every you've earned the award. You've done the marathons, didn't you? Yeah, did it? <laughs> did it? You can't didn't do, do it in now, training, mate. though. You didn't do uh, it in training. You done it no, now. <laughs> I, I used to. The, I, I found the art of waving your arms, and it meant to get down there, wave your arms, push up, and, uh, so I didn't have to run about, mate. You know, and you had the ability. You could turn on a tanner, you, you bugger. I did. I'm not just saying it, but you it's you stood out like a, when you came in because when I joined in '67. You weren't in the side. I'd never heard of Alan Hudson. And then all of a sudden, it was like this young boy came in and I thought, cheeky bugger. And I remember you knocking a ball uh, when the first game st through somebody's legs. You know, they, they came in and tackled you. And I thought to myself, I wasn't playing that game. I was up in the gods because I think Dave Sexton had left me out. For you, probably. I don't know. But I thought, oh, that Christ. I, I, I thought I better, be. move, I better move on. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, um, you know. But uh, bloody hell, it's some podcast. This is. You wait till you get my bill. I'll tell you what, it's <laughs> going to be enormous. <laughs> <laughs> can I ask? Can I um, can I ask one question, Birch? A, a lot of Chelsea fans of my era, when they think of Alan Birchinal, they think of those two goals you scored against Arsenal that day at the Bridge. Am I right in thinking that was the highlight of your your time at the Bridge? That was about it. Was Boxing Day, wasn't it? Yep. Bo Boxing Day morning, and uh, it was about the first time, you know. Uh, 
I went to bed early the night before, but yeah, I would say, <laughs> uh, I would say that uh, yeah, the two against Arsenal. I, I not to, the, my debut goal was at Sunderland, as I said. Uh, Nobby Ousman crossed it, and I remember going in. I can't remember. You know, I mean, I, somebody asked me the other day. Said, "Oh, did you score a couple?" I can't. Uh, I don't know. I, I think uh, I think round about ninety odd. But it was on telly the other week. They, out. Everybody said there were tappings. So I mean, uh, but no, the Arsenal game was great. Because... No, I see your your header again. Your header on against Arsenal was on telly the other week. It was unbelievable. Was it? YouTube. It's on yeah. YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't I can't, can't, unbelievable. I can't get. I wonder who it. I, I wonder who it was. Yeah, I'm just going to break you up there because I knew what was coming there. <laughs> so I mean, I bet Tony thinks he's been trying to get me on for weeks because I couldn't work. I could work these bloody new things, so I've had to bring a man from the from the club with me. He's great, Johnny. So he's he's helped uh, set this thing up. But uh, no, I've really uh, it's been bloody great. We're both survivors, mate. You and me in our own ways. So, but you cannot yeah, yeah. take away, you cannot take away them days. I wouldn't have swapped it with the with the people you meet. It's like as we said, Stevie Kemba's coming up for the last game with his family. I'm still in touch with TC, still in touch with you now, still in you know from the players of that era. It's brilliant when they come to the ground at uh, at our place. Uh, you know, the ex-players, Dennis Rofe and uh, people like that, that, you know, Johnny Samuels and, you know, it's just takes you back to that era. So really, I know outside of the financial side, but uh, you'll be all right with the 15 million that you put away in transfer fees and dodgy deals, won't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> all gone out, meant it all, all over the bar. Um <laughs> Do you do? I, I'm, I'm going to put him for a speaker's job up there. Come up one game and do a speaker's job up there. Me and yeah. TC and you. Yeah, you'll have to get. Uh, yeah, you have to see TC. Mind you, TC is very. Is is you know TC is very. What's the word? Not withdrawn, but he's is is you know he, he don't. Uh, don't fly. The only thing he does do, he phones me from Bramall Lane. And he says, have you got one of these, Birch? And he focuses his camera onto the big West stand. And it says, the Tony Curry stand. <laughs> I say, you bugger. I said, I've got, he said, you haven't got one of these, have you? I said, no, <laughs> you haven't got a bloody MBE either, son. <laughs> so it, it's a banter, you know what I mean? It's fantastic. Yeah, you should yeah. have had one after you, shouldn't you? Bloody hell, where well, was the... the Where's that local boozer? They've named the pub a nightclub, an afternoon club they've named after me. Have they? Bloody hell. Yeah, you yeah. Spend, you used to spend a lot of time in there, I'll tell you. When they... <laughs> <laughs> but it was, no, it's been great, pal. Just oh, Sorry if I've been rattling on, but stuff comes to me. No, you've did... been, you, you're, you're exactly what we wanted. You're, I've, you're I've, perfect, I've, written all, I've great... written all this down. I've written all this down. There's half of it of miss. We <laughs> could go again on here because uh, stuff to come off and uh, whatever put here, you know, it just... Oh, it says Alan Hudson, rubbish. Osgood, rubbish. Charlie Cook, rubbish. Birchinal, oh, <laughs> fantastic. What a player. <laughs> Happy days, mate. I don't know. A bit, uh... like, a bit, a bit like Eric Morton. A bit like Eric Morton there. Rubbish, yeah. Rubbish. It yeah, rubbish. but uh, I don't know about Tony sat through this and he's thinking, bloody hell, we haven't had one of these before, have we? So do you look after him? I mean, he's a good lad and he? he's, been, he's been patient waiting for me, but the cheque didn't come through us. Ow, I mean, did ow, the cheque didn't come he, through? Hey, well, you won't get no cheque in the post off him, no, mate. But I mean, bloody he hell. Loves, he loves you. Anyone that's had that blue shirt on, Al. Yeah. He's Chelsea no. daft. I have, I have to warn him to keep it down, you know, play Chelsea down, you know. It, well, it's great to have you on, mate. No, I've, I've enjoyed it, pal. It's been like a throwback to uh, our era and there's nothing about it. If nobody else listens, I'm not bothered because it's been a great uh, <laughs> well, half hour of... Um, Probably more than that, I don't know. But I've really enjoyed it because it's brought back memories and it's great to see you. And uh, 
you know, a, a great times. So I'd only had three years there, but there were three fantastic years. Never, well, ever like forget 30 them. years. It was it like mother. 30 years. It was going out <laughs> with you and Ozzy. <laughs> and you used to give me stick. I've got to go home tonight, lads. You're not going anywhere. You're coming with us. Oh, I thought, bloody hell. Can't we transfer them to, for God's sake? But it was it was great times. Great times. Been <laughs> tripping to see you, Eddie. Top player, top man. And you, pal. And you. Great. Man. OK, Love look, uh, uh, Birch, thanks again for coming on. You've been an absolute diamond. It's exa exactly what we wanted. You and Huddy to be sharing stories from the days when you were together at the bridge. So it's fantastic. Thanks for coming on. All right, Tony. Nice to have met you. Cheers, pal. Well Cheers done, Al. Look, look after yourself, Thanks, mate. my friend. See you, pal. Love you, mate. Bye. Cheers, guys. Been a pleasure. And bye to Johnny as well. <laughs>